Hey everybody and welcome to E3 2018. It is that time of the year again. I am so excited. Many, many press conferences are ahead of us and I will be doing, uh, I believe, at least four or five of them. Uh, but before we begin with this one, EA, I would like to uh, ask you guys to go over to uh, mine and Ryan's Looping Real Gaming channel. The link to that channel is in the description down below and subscribe to that channel to support us. Uh, we will do uh, many different gameplay stuff, but also discuss our own opinions on uh, E3 as a whole once this is done. And I might also actually upload one of these press conferences uh, reaction videos directly to that. It might be Bethesda or Ubisoft, I'm not yet too, uh, too sure. But yeah, today we kick off as usual with uh, EA, they are uh, always pretty much the first, and in my opinion, uh, that is uh, the right way to do it, because of course EA always gets a lot of hate. Uh, time and time again, they are chosen as the worst company of uh, America, and uh, last year, of course, they uh, particularly messed things up because first they released Mass Effect Andromeda, which was just a disaster. Uh, and especially for me, who has Mass Effect 1 as my number two favorite games of all time, uh, Andromeda, and figuring out that they didn't even send, uh, set their A team or their B team on it, but instead their C team really hurts. And of course, they also said that they will not um, support and Mass Effect game uh, for the foreseeable future, so that really messed things up. And of course, the most famous example of last year, Battlefront 2, the loot box disaster, um, you know, even got worldwide uh, mainstream news. And also this week, uh, it became uh, public that the Dutch, uh, I don't know if it's government, but at least a uh, a um, a anti-gambling uh, society actually uh, filed a lawsuit against EA. Uh, so I wonder if they will actually mention that, but probably not to keep things at least on the positive side. Of course, also Battlefield 5 uh, got a lot of negative attention uh, during its showcase. Now, the mainstream media mainly picked up on the uh, sexism, of course, that, ha that took place where people criticized the game reveal purely on the fact that there was a woman on the cover, uh, something that I... Um, uh, I'm, 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 I'm kind of ashamed that there's so much negativity purely uh, to the fact that there's a woman involved, uh, something that they can easily, easily uh, solve by saying, okay, this is not a realistic depiction of World War II, but instead our own take on it. And what I thought was such a shame about the mainstream media, just picking on the fact that everybody likes, you know... Um, Picking out the, the, the woman part only is that also, of course, the soldiers have their face painted blue, like they're in Braveheart, or the one British soldier with a samurai sword on his back. So instead of just depicting as as a, the, the game review as an unrealistic uh, image of World War II, everybody just wants to point down on, on the woman factor and make it very political that way. And I think that is a... That is a shame, and I wonder if they're going to uh, to tackle Battlefield Five in a more sort of like realistic way during this presentation, or if they're just going to say, "Nope, we're going to go mainstream and political correctness only." Um, so in in in, in things, um, they have a lot to prove. Of course, this year they did uh, release uh, a way out. They published that, uh, but of course there was nothing uh, EA relevant there. Um, I don't even know if it's true, but. Uh, I believe that the game creator said that he gets 100% of the funds to his company. Uh, so, you know, there there's no EA things there. It was even the case where if you if one person owned that game a way out, another person, because it's co-op only, could play the whole game for free with you. So that was actually very good and a very uh, anti-EA way of doing things. So, um, I, speculations... You know, are they going to address all the problems that they had faced last year? The loot boxes, you know, are they going to say, you know, we listen to you guys? Something they already did last year. You know, they said, we listen to you, we took away the season pass, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, it's still, it's still EA. They're still one of the worst gaming companies or, you know, only thinking about money. And I think that is something that a lot of, of, of gamers forget, is that even with all this negative attention that they're getting, that they must be doing horrible. But the numbers show, and this is mostly due to things like Madden and FIFA, uh, the ultimate team, 
financially they had a killer year last year uh you know publicly and and, and news wise it was terrible but financially ea is doing great so you know it's it's uh, we'll have to wait and see if they're going to change their ways um but uh, but I'm excited again. Uh, you know we love to hate on EA, and I'm so excited to see what kind of things they did last year. Of course, they had all those YouTubers and influencers, and I think they have that again this year. So there might be some cringy moments. I believe a new Star Wars game is going to be revealed, so that's very exciting. Uh, hopefully, it's not going to be riddled with like loot boxes and money transfers. Um, we're gonna see more of Anthem. That game did not, uh, you know. Um, impressed me that much uh, last year. It was very pretty, but it was more of like a Destiny clone, so I'm curious to see if it goes further than that. Um, someone, there were some speculations and maybe some leaks about a new Command & Conquer game, but then someone said it might be a mobile game. Uh, some new Sims, of course, we're going to see the sporting games. Um, Unravel 2 might be might be shown. Uh, the word Dragon Age was not mentioned, of course, because uh, the A team is working on Anthem, but they still have the B team of Bioware, and so they might be working on an, on a Dragon Age. I will be pleasantly supply, uh, surprised if we uh, if we see anything of that. Anyway, without further ado, let's get the show going. If you haven't watched the uh, show yet, grab a beer or grab a Coke, grab some snacks, uh, and let's get the show on the road. Just ignore this for a moment. It's only gonna last for 10 seconds. This is the Dutch stream that I always watch. They have a pre-show, they have an after-show, and uh, they've always provided a very good cover coverage on uh, on things. Mm. Here we go. Again, I just want to know. Uh, want you guys to know these videos usually don't do very good or very well, um, but. I purely do this for myself. I love E3. It is just, you know, the festival, the party for us gamers. Um, all these videos get copyright claimed because of copyrighted music like this. So I also want you to know that I don't earn, like, a single sense of this. It's purely for fun. It's purely because I want this. So let's get things going. Oh! This looks like... What is this? Ah, uh, we're, we're starting off with Anthem. Something, of course, very dangerous after Destiny 2 lost so many people. Oh my gosh, how cool is that? So that was Anthem. We're mm -hmm. going to talk about that a little bit later in the show. But welcome everybody to EA Play. I'm Andrea Renee. And while you might recognize me from the gaming community, I'm kind I don't. of a new face. Sorry, <laughs> I don't. Here, EA wanted to change things up because they know that I'm both a gamer. She does look like all those gaming play, girls with the red hair and the glasses. This year is going to be a lot of fun, you guys. I hope you're ready because we're about to. She looks like Mac Turney. But before we do that, EA Play is more than just the show you're about to watch. Right behind these doors, there is a fan fest outside, and it is huge this year. It's a full three-day gaming festival where thousands of gamers can come and play games for free. Now, inside the theater here, there are hundreds of community members from all over the world who are going to be capturing, streaming, and getting their first impressions. There you go, the influencers, be showing off YouTubers. Before we can get <laughs> Wish to I could that, go too. Some reveals, of course. We're going to kick things off with a look at Battlefield 5 multiplayer. Now, I know Trevor Noah gave you the first look. Yeah, we can clap it up. <laughs> we've got some That's a really today. shitty clap, too. <laughs> on to FIFA 19, and boy, do they have some big news, you guys. Oh. Any World Cup fans? You guys excited? Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Then we've got two new indie games to share, and then I'm going to come back towards the end of the show. Holland's not taking part in the World Cup, so it's not that interesting. Nice but I am half German, so I could still Anthem. root for Germany. Course, but I don't like football that much anyway. For Anthem. I'm into it. You want, you want to do this with me? No. Oh, <laughs> this is already cringeworthy. Go away. Well, oh, my God. You guys, if I killed you all the secrets at once, right? Give him, give him a break. He needs to just enjoy the show. So without further ado, let's get things started. Okay. She saved it. It wasn't it wasn't cringe worthy for too long. Alright, what we got? Is this battlefield? See, this is how the soldiers should look. Mm -oh. <laughs> Just as I said. Uh... Battlefield 5. Alright. 
They have to do a lot to convince us. Oh, there's that dude with the beard. He was also there during the reveal. Right, it's time to kick this thing off. It's been two weeks since the reveal of Battlefield 5. And you know what? It's been exciting, it's been a lot of speculation, and so many brilliant remixes of a reveal trailer. But there's also been lots and lots of questions from the community. Critique, you mean? You, you want to see more gameplay innovations. You want to know how customization actually works. Well, you want to know more about our take on the Second World War. Our take. So today, Look at that. We'll show you more gameplay. They're already changing it. It's the deepest and most immersive battlefield yet. It certainly is. You will be able to dive and smash through windows to surprise your enemies. Where previously defenses were stationary, you will now be able to move these weapons around on the battlefield mm -hmm. and gain advantages. And our renowned destruction system is back and more... Oh, that does look good, ever. though. So, well, you can't really hide from those pesky tanks anymore as they come chasing you for you, as they rip through those buildings. The snow looks a little you weird. Will now be able to customize Falling on the roof. Your vehicles and your weapons, not only for the gameplay, but for the looks. As part of this, this is what annoys me, though. The look of the soldiers. Um, that's just the tip of the iceberg. About you can customize, so I can make mine realistic. New gameplay systems here at EA Play from our community. So let's talk about our single player in War Stories. Yes, let's do that. So we want to tell you about those untold stories that got us excited to start with on this game. It's about what you will see is really those moments of human heroism. It is about witnessing. The war through the eyes of the men and the women who shaped the world forever. It means smaller real, battles. Real and relatable people facing the brutality of war. We start this off by an exclusive look at uh, the Nordlis war story over at the Xbox briefing tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Pastor. Something not to miss tomorrow. So, our launching in October is just the beginning. You will all go on an expanding journey to a second world war. No loot boxes, no premium pass. <laughs> but airdrops instead, which I'm not entirely sure that. Oh my we'll god. Something new. And as part of that journey, after launch, you'll get something I know a lot of you have been asking for. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, don't say Battle Royale. <laughs> it's Royale. <laughs> really? Oh no! Oh shit! Oh, EA. Royale reimagined for Battlefield. So we bring those pillars of Battlefield with destruction, team play, vehicles into this new experience. I, so the moment we will bring you experience <laughs> that you haven't played before in Battlefield or anywhere else. Hold on, but I have to stop this for a moment. More about that later. Listen, it is impressive how EA and DICE are doing this. During the reveal with Trevor Noah, in the first... 20 minutes, so that was before the reveal trailer. I was very excited about Battlefield 5 and how it went to, like, to World War II and all these like futures they said. And then they showed the pictures in the reveal trailer, and I was like, oh, this is not what I want. And now they say they're going to add Battle Royale, and it's even more of what I not want. It's like, they, they keep putting more and more reasons for me not to get this game. It is incredible how they are breaking their own, that, own thing. It's time to show you what makes Battlefield so special. It's the unmatched intensity of our multiplayer sandbox, and this time, it's even more epic. Fighting across multiple maps <sighs> and modes. Welcome to your next Battlefield experience, and this is your first look at Ground Operation. They better, they better bring it. <laughs> even featuring music. <laughs> See, this is cool. In the the airdrops. Also, subtle classic tune of the the battlefield theme.
I'm uh, I am not, not impressed. <laughs> As we're referencing to a ski battle. Oh, we get a sports game. Oh, this is football. They said in-game engine, right? This is not actual gameplay. This is rendered. Yep, there you go. here comes the copyright claim. So I'll just talk through it to at least, you know, seize the damage as much. Of course, using Neymar. Very popular here in, uh, in Japan as well. Do they actually have him here? They of course had Pele uh, a few years back on a... Uh, I think it was an EA, it might have been Microsoft, but I think it was EA. Some very bombastic. Oh, they have a cup. Great. That's the UEFA Champions League. The pinnacle of club football, where the world's best clubs compete, and icons of the game like Gerard and Cruyff cemented their legacies. The world's biggest league joins the world's game. And a special thanks to the legendary Hans Zimmer and LA's own Vince Staples for collaborating with us on the trailer. Oh and my god. I really god. love the trailer because it captures our epic vision for how the Champions League comes to life. In FIFA Hans Zimmer will also now do I epic football that stories. The UEFA Champions League is an amazing addition for the game. It's where football's biggest heroes like Ronaldo and Neymar clash every year. And it's the place where champions rise. And you've been asking for this for a long time, and we are thrilled that it's here. And that's mm, why I'm also we're thrilled. The champions League across the game. There'll be an authentic Champions League tournament mode. Your club will chase this trophy in career mode. Alex Hunter will pursue Champions League glory in your story mode. Look Champions at that, he's still back, that's cool. In FIFA Ultimate Team, there'll be live and authentic Champions League content. And we'll share more details on that along with all our other Ultimate Team features later this summer. And all that's just the beginning. As you know, the heart and soul of FIFA is gameplay. And this year, we're giving you the tools to control the pitch in every moment, from your tactical approach to the match to each technical touch. And we know how passionate you are about gameplay, so we've worked hard to shape and refine our vision for FIFA 19 with input from our community, from hands-on tests with beginners to detailed feedback sessions with FIFA pros. And we're going to be sharing a lot more about gameplay throughout the summer, but what I can tell you right now is that the quality bar in gameplay was raised yet again this year. So we look forward they say to that each year. experiencing the game on the but it's football. this week. And also, of course, we're extremely excited for everybody to play it when we launch on September 28th. And that's our FIFA 19 news headlined by the UEFA Champions League. But I just wanted to take a minute to pause and reflect. <laughs> Standing next to this trophy is a little bit surreal. You know... Growing up, there's two iconic trophies that every young player dreams of winning. And for your club, it's this one, the pursuit of Champions League glory. But for your country, mm, it's World this Cup. trophy. Yeah. <laughs> the World Cup. And with the tournament starting in just five days, we're excited for the world to compete for it. In five days? Oh. 
As you Again, Holland imagine, is not taking part, so I don't know. On the FIFA team can't wait for the start of the World Cup. And we want to celebrate with FIFA 18 players, which is why we just updated the game with a free World Cup experience on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PS, PC, and Nintendo Switch. Yes. <laughs> but you can take Ronaldo and Portugal to their first World Cup victory. Or you can write your own story with some great nations who didn't qualify this year. Or you can make a crazy dream a reality for your home country like mine, Iceland. <laughs> oh, that was really fun. thought that a nation of only 350,000 people would ever qualify. And you can feel their excitement. A little staticky. Oh, any England fans in the room that might still sting? <laughs> And Lena isn't the only one who's excited. FIFA 18 players are loving the World Cup experience so far. But we don't want to stop there. We want to invite everyone to come and join the celebration. So I'm pleased to announce that for a limited time, FIFA 18 complete with the entire World Cup experience is available for a free trial on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Okay, on that's nice. Origin access. Yeah, you can download and play the entire game right now for free. I might, yeah. I might try that. Just, you know, while I'm pre-rendering or something, the, or while I'm rendering so this video. So to trial, we've got some of the world's biggest creators. We're going to be playing live at the end of the show, representing their nations in a little mini World Cup tournament. And this summer will bring so much more for FIFA fans. Plenty of FIFA 18 content centered around the World Cup, and we'll bring you all the details on FIFA 19. But in the meantime, let's all enjoy the World Cup. Thank you, and... This is gameplay. Oh no, this is eighteen. Yeah, okay. Good morning. Oh, here he is. Ooh. You know, the FIFA this guy never rests. 20 million people from 60 countries playing in competitive leagues this year. Well, the FIFA team never rests either, bringing the Champions League and the World Cup. You look at his face, you just see him only thinking about we money. Wait for you to experience it all. Um, we've got so much to do here today, but I want to welcome you to EA Play. It's our third EA Play and our second one in Hollywood, and we couldn't be more excited to have you with us to share all the games that we have to show you. We've got lots to do, but before we, get st before we move on, I'd like to share just a couple of things. The greatest disruption to the consumption of entertainment media in the last five years is the combination of streaming plus subscription. Mm -hmm. As consumers, watching movies, watching TV, listening to music, reading books has never been easier. And we believe that disruption is going to be a pro have a profound impact on our industry in the next few years. And so over the last couple of weeks, you will have seen that we announced a new team from Israel has joined Electronic Arts to help our investment to extend our thinking and extend our pioneering into this cloud gaming world. For many people, that's going to mean extending the experiences they already play on our partner platforms. For others, it's going to mean new games and new modalities of play across a whole variety of platforms. But for everyone, it's going to mean playing games anywhere, anytime. So this week, we've got a tech demo running. Um, all of our games streaming in HD from the cloud to multiple devices that you'll be able to try out for yourselves. Now, it's not quite ready for full market prime time yet, but it is a promise of what we hope to bring you in the future. The second part of that, of course, is subscription. And we started subscription a number of years ago, and many millions of you have signed up and experienced the joy of being able to have full access to a great catalog of games. Today, we're announcing Origin Access Premiere. So three things you need to know about it. Origin Access Premier will bring you all of our new PC games, starting with Madden NFL. Oh, this is like the PC Xbox the um, pass decade. thing. Oh, Jesus. 
Hold on. Commercial. Fuck off. If there's still Twitch that I'm watching. Battlefield 5 and of course Anthem. And there'll be many more titles. Yes, it's exactly like the Xbox thing. That's that that's okay. Our library of over a hundred games from EA and other publishers. And third, it will launch later this summer. So that's a little later in the year, but if you want to get started right now and experience the benefits and joys of subscription, come in and play a free trial of Origin Access, our base subscription, this weekend. Mm. Thank you and have a great show. Oh, what we got now? Get our latest. Oh, okay, this is the trader for that. The issue, of course, that is going to bring in in the future is that, uh, just like with like Netflix and Hulu, is you're going to have all these multiple subscription, and basically, I think people just want to have one or two subscriptions. You don't want to have so many different subscriptions at once, you know? It's same with Netflix. Netflix just has the best things to offer, so people usually, you know, choose for that. And things like HBO. They have good series too, but maybe you will subscribe for that like a month or something when Game of Thrones is on and then you'll, you know, unsubscribe again. That might be the same thing here. Hey everybody! What's up? So I'm here, sitting inside the crowded EA Play. Oh no. And I just happened to find Mr. Vince Ampella here in the audience from Respawn! What's going on Vince? How you feeling today? Gotta get a Titanfall. I love this stuff. I love seeing new games. I mean, someone's super excited about that man on PC, right? Yeah! So, um, you guys may have seen that uh, Vince was tweeting yesterday, and there has been a bunch of speculation. So, uh, well, you want to just get right to it? Sure. I mean, we're not ready to show all of our stuff yet. We're working on a bunch of stuff. It's amazing. The teams are Wait, Respawn is working on a Star Wars game, isn't there? We wanted to bring a little tidbit, so we've been working with Lucas on yes. getting the name and kind of the setting for what our Star Wars game is going to be. And we're Show going to me. talk about it right now. Oh, you guys got any guesses? I bet you the, the internet is going wild right now. I hope so. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. So Don't show me behind the scenes, though. Is Jedi Fallen Order. Ooh. Woo. So Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah. So it kind of gives you some idea that you'll be playing a Jedi. So does that mean I get to, like, hold a lightsaber? Yes. I see. Innuendo there. Else? Well, it takes place during the dark times. Trying to be a little vague here, but when the Jedi's are being hunted, so it's going to be a spectacular. So for all the like the hardcore nerds out there who want to know like where in the timeline, like which between which episodes is it? Between three and four. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Between three and four. That sounds like a nice time. Get it? Uh, any other tidbits? It's not a nice. It's a dark time. It's a dark time. <laughs> <laughs> Vincent Pella is, very, is a cool dude. Of course, ori he's, he's originally the guy that made Modern Warfare 4, or like one of the heads of right, like, so Modern Warfare. Wait, no, uh, know, like Call of Duty 4, sorry. Modern Warfare 1. Uh, it will be holiday of next year, 2019, not this year. So, sorry to dash any hope. <laughs> But now that we know, we can set expectations. We're all going to be at least show up. something, and, right? Uh, hopefully, we'll hear from more from you maybe uh, maybe next year. Oh yeah. Well, Vince, <laughs> it was great to see you. Thanks for stopping by the show today. Uh, we do have a little bit more news on Star Wars, so I'm going to toss Good. it over to Dennis. Hold on, stop. I need to stop. I need to stop this shit because now, yeah, now we're going to get better fun. This is first of all. Very low profile how they announce a next Star Wars game. Um, maybe also fitting. I mean, they didn't show any gameplay. Uh, they just revealed the name. Um, and if, of course, Vincent Pella came on the stage and he said, like, this is our, you know, name. And they would show, like, a title screen and then that's it. That would feel very overdramatic for something that's so tiny. So, sure, it fits the actual reveal. You know, this low low profile just sitting in the crowd. But also, it's kind of like, it feels amateurish. So, I don't know. They Again, they, they, they've they been slacking with, with Star Wars as well. And I'm very curious what we're going to see now with Battlefront 2, which, of course, whew, it's got a lot of, uh, lot of flack. 
Hello there. Hello. My name is Dennis. I work at DICE in Stockholm on Star Wars Battlefront 2. I'm really happy and excited to be here today, so thank you so much for hanging out with me for a little bit. So we launched our game in November of last year. And it actually sold pretty okay. Quite right. So instead of coming out of the gate sprinting like we really wanted to, we had to take a step back and make sure that we were delivering the game that our players really wanted. Mm -hmm. So we decided to completely overhaul our progression system and add a bunch of new character cosmetics for players to collect instead. So from there, we added a new hunt mode inspired by the original Battlefront games that I loved personally, starting with the Ewoks on Endor. And <laughs> thank you. Um, I haven't played this mode yet. I know it's out. Be by far the most popular update of the game, and the team loved building Ewok Hunt. So, as you might know, we're currently in our Han Solo season with content from the movie coming next week. It's headlined by the new planet Kessel, a really dangerous place, and it features the return of one of our favorite modes, Extraction. So looking forward a little bit, this summer we will be introducing a new squad system to the game, which will allow you to team up much easier and play with your friends. We're also adding a new Starfighter mode focused around dogfighting with your hero ships. And looking ahead a little bit more, we will also be delivering a new large-scale multiplayer sandbox experience focused around capturing command posts and attacking and taking out capital ships. But that's not all. We know They're showing the trader over and over again. New heroes, villains and planets from a certain era that features a very iconic Star Wars conflict. So I'm excited to confirm that Battlefront 2 this year will be going deep into the Clone Wars. It's about time. Of course, Geonosis right there. It's only fitting that we begin on the planet Geonosis, featuring multiple levels, including the largest level we have ever built for Battlefront. That's cool. So let's talk about the heroes and villains. First, let me introduce mm -hmm. the most powerful droid. Grievous <laughs> was not on Geonosis, but okay. And I do know that, of course, in the Clone Wars series he was, but that doesn't count. Kenobi's cool. Finally making his debut in Battlefront after all these years. Mm. So, but we're, we're not done. That's not it. They will not come alone. Joining them is the Dark Lord and leader of the Separatist Alliance, Count Dooku. Yeah. As well as someone to bring balance to the Force, Obi-Wan's unruly Padawan, Anakin Skywalker. The team at home is extremely excited to be building all of these cool things. EA and DICE are committed to Battlefront. We had a rough start, but he I hated. really think that this game has a bright future. Thank you very much for playing the game, providing us with your feedback, talking to us. Together, we will make this as the greatest game that we can possibly build. There would be no Battlefront without you. So thank you, may the force be with you, and enjoy the rest of E3. Thanks. First of all, the solo trailer that they showed, they w it was already released like a week ago. What is this? <gasps> it's Unravel 2! I, I should play Unravel 1, it looks really cute. Swim, little one. Oh no! Is it that guy again? Is it the shy one? Yes, it is! Hi, it's, it's really good to see you. Uh, in Unravel, we used yarn to symbolize love and the bonds between people. In our new game, 
we, we tear that bond up right at the start. You lose everything, including your spark. But when things are at yeah, the co -op. you find hope. And you form a new bond. And your spark is rekindled. And it leads you off on an adventure. So welcome to Unravel 2. It's a game about fresh starts and second chances. These two little souls who refuse to give up and who build something new and beautiful together. And the whole game is inspired by that spirit of... Oh, Jesus. Oh, fuck. I hope I don't get in trouble with, like, a Japanese commercial thing. But skip. Optimism and togetherness. You They're see, very strict in, J it's strict in Japan. to be played with two characters. You can play it alone, or you can play it in co-op with a friend, but there's always two characters there, sharing one yarn, and working together to get through this adventure. This game, it's quite different from the first. It's, it's both friendlier and more challenging, but above all, it's a lot more playful, and, and we think it's a worthy successor. And I want to show it to you now, so I, I brought some help. Uh, so please m welcome Michael to the stage. He's a producer at Coldwood. All right. And we're going to try to show you a little bit of what I'm talking about, about how you can play the game in, in co-op with yourself, essentially. Oh my god, help. <laughs> oh, this whole thing is awkward. <laughs> so this wasn't prepared. There we are. So when you're playing it by yourself, you can essentially pick up the other character and carry them along through the more fast-paced segments of the game. And we actually tried to include a bit more of those, because we figured that since it's a co-op game, we wanted to have more like thrill and danger and kind of wow moments, uh, places that were like fun and exciting. And then when you get to the more puzzly areas like this, when you're problem solving, you can split apart into two and switch back and forth between the two characters because that's how we've essentially designed all the problems and puzzles of the game, that you're always working together and helping each other out and utilizing this bond between you to overcome any obstacle that you come across. So I guess I'll, I'll, I'll jump in at this point. Yeah, come join me. <laughs> so um, I'm going to be the re red one. Okay. I'll be the blue one. I'll be blue. A little celebra celebratory flip there. And the bird is back. Oops. Music's very nice. Playing it, Look at the game's good. <laughs> Again, it's not a triple A though. I also thought that the Unravel sold pretty bad, but of course that was in a time when Origin was still very inaccessible, and more people join now, so hopefully this will do a little bit better. Okay, this is the scary part. Let's see if we can Got it? Oh, very nice. <laughs> oh, oh, faster. <laughs> Oh, well done. <laughs> sweet, well done. Okay, I'll, I'll go up and distract the grouse. You can, I'll sneak up here. Okay, your, your turn. Yeah, look at me. <laughs> here you are. <laughs> keep, no, keep him up with the left. <laughs> now I'll go. Again, this... <clears throat> it lacks professionality. All this right. whole... I know that that's their okay. shtick, that's their, what they're going for, this like, sort of like dorky creator, but... Now we can breathe again. Yeah, finally. Or can we? <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So that's a, that's a quick little look at um, Unravel 2. Uh, and, uh, Meh, it's okay. Yeah, I, I, I really hope you like it. And uh, before I go, I just want to send some, some love to the team back home because working on this game has been an, a, a completely amazing team effort in so many levels and everybody has worked so hard. So there, there's a bunch of us from Coldwood here and, and thank you to those and thank you to everybody back home and thank you, love you. <laughs> it's, I don't know. Again, you know what's most impressive about this game is the music. The music in the gameplay part is good, and the music here is great. Or this might be copyright, I don't know. Again, it looks fun in co-op. This is something I would definitely play. But again, it's not enough to win like a, you know, to win the best press conference. And it's quite clear they're leaving Anthem until the end. brilliant team at Coldwood, the great, the game is really strong. These guys have done an amazing job and it's clear that they have a lot of passion and I can't personally wait to play Unravel 2 with my kids. But what's even more amazing is that we will make Unravel 2 available to everyone today. Yep. Wow. Right. You'll be able That's to impressive. Take these two Yarnies on their next big adventure starting today. The game is finished, it's out. <laughs> That's just very cool. Actually, this is well done. So thank you, Martin, and thank you to the team at Coldwood. Back in 2015, we started on this journey with the original Unravel to seek out the most creative, independent developers and bring them into our EA Originals program. It's been our way of helping these creators bring their unique games to the world and to tell their stories. And last year, if you remember, Joseph Fares was up here. Yeah, way out. Oh, team at Hazelight what a way game. Out. And I think we all kind of remember that. Um, and you might even remember him from the Game Awards as well. I think I did. Oh, yes. Anyhow, in March, that game caught fire. It's, it was in it, it's innovative, it's fun, and it's something fresh and new. And you all loved it. Yes, I did. We saw over 2 million players in the first two weeks. And A Way Out is such a huge success that Joseph and his team are expanding and moving into a new studio. So stories like this drive our industry, and it's why we will continue to work with independent developers to help them realize their dreams. Which leads us to our next EA Originals title from a little game studio in Berlin called Joe My Games. When I met this team and I saw the game, I was instantly drawn to how personal this story was. It's one that Tower carries a very powerful and important message, and it's unlike anything we have ever done. So please welcome Connie Gepper to the stage from Joe My Games to tell you more about Sea of Solitude. Sea of Solitude. No, the sounds interesting. Thank you, Patrick. Oh no. <laughs> I still remember um, during the pitch how enthusiastic Patrick was, and that afterwards, like our whole team, including me, were super excited. It actually feels a little bit the same right now. <laughs> Where are they getting these I'm people? Excited. Maybe a little too excited. <sighs> well, thank you. Uh, we are Yumai. Uh, oh, Yumai? Yawol. From Berlin, and we are developing Sea of Solitude. Or it's good to see an uh, indie uh, company from Berlin, so at least, journey representing. From the very first concept to actually becoming 
a part of EA Originals is simply amazing. Let me tell you more about our game. Indeed. Tell on, sister. When humans get too lonely, they turn into monsters. Okay. This is at the core of everything you will see, hear, and hopefully feel while playing SOS. What makes this oh, underlying that's concept clever. so important and so unique is that nearly every human being can at least somehow relate to or remember the feeling of being lonely. In my case, I started writing the story when I felt the loneliest in my life. I think as an artist, you process your emotional world by letting it out uh, and putting it into your art. Um, I'm still amazed how like, the concept seems to just float out of me like uh, right into the hand and onto the paper. I think this is also why so many people can instantly connect with the game because it's not a made up story. She has the most cliche so German accent. It takes place in a fantastic setting. In SOS, we try to show how people experience different kinds of loneliness, but also how outsiders, friends, and family see those who struggle. We achieve all this in playful ways so that players who want to simply enjoy a fantastic See, now it looks very pretty. When the but weather's good like this, who wants to look a bit deeper can reveal a whole emotional world beneath it all. Sea of Solitude is about a young woman named Kay who is suffering from such strong loneliness that her inner feeling, the darkness, the anger, the hopelessness, worthlessness, turns to the outside and she becomes a monster. The game is about finding out why this happened to her, but also how to turn her back into a human. Ultimately, the goal is to bring all those emotions into balance. Some needs to become bigger, some would be better off a little smaller, but to embrace even your destructive part or your self-doubt. There is so much in the talking. Same way you embrace your joy. Oh or my your God. Pain. This is what being human is all about. And that's what our game is all about. Thank you. Is this Finally. The style. Uh, in a way, it's kind of cool. It's very journey-like, isn't it? Very colorful, very pretty. Her style is a little... Whoa, we got some Attack on Titan here. That looks pretty cool. Oh, that... Oh, my God. I think I would play this. The the monster sections look awesome. The main character looks a little strange. Of course, she did say she becomes a monster. That's probably why she looks like that, but... Oh no, NBA, yeah! No, you're not the only one. <laughs> Now the question is, is this going to have a single player campaign as well, a story mode? Or is this NBA Street, isn't it? Well, or, fuck it, I don't know. Maybe Street will be part of the regular NBA game. So the one is that like the story mode? I just I just don't know. 
It's in a game. <laughs> Shay Kivlin, aka Young Kiv. I'm from Seattle, Washington. The only goal of mine is really to win the Madden Belt. Kiv's been going after that belt since 2016. At some point, he's going to need to get out of this quarterfinal and claim a major. It's a big night for Young Kiv. He's been stuck at the quarterfinals. And here he is now in his first championship game, looking to accomplish a goal. Third and four, throws it low. T.Y. Oh, drops it. That was a phenomenal read, and Trini's got the lead. 40. To 19. I hate losing way more than I love winning. Oh, we have an incredible matchup. It's a rematch. Better not be the one to die. Touchdown, Kev. He throws it high. And young Kev is going to be your champion. Can I play you again? You want to get smacked again on TV? <laughs> <laughs> Every face. No. Madden 18 right. champion. He's finally done it. Okay. First of all, he looks like a douchebag. <laughs> how you kids, Eddie? How you doing? I've been good. You still recovered from that butt whooping? Wow, already starting. <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Juju Smith Schuster from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, as you guys can see, king of touchdown celebrations. That's pretty fire. I like that a lot. Very uh, fire. No, this is Young Kid. Madden 18, Madden champion. Like, give it up for Young Kid, y'all. Give it up. <laughs> young Kid, how has it been, you know, your success and your path, you know, to where you're at today? It's, uh, I've always been a competitor. Um, when I was in high school, I was playing baseball. I hurt my arm. So then I picked up Madden, and at first, I was really bad. I was getting blown out online, but I kept at it. I put more and more time into it. Eventually, I made my first tournament, but I had a big decision. It was the same time as my graduation. Wow. Okay. So the key to be the number one player in Madden is to hurt your arm in baseball. <laughs> That's number one. Number two, you said you had the decision to, be to, uh, to go to your graduation or go to the tournament. So, like, what did you do? I chased that money. I still got my diploma, but I chased that money. <laughs> there you go. We're out here chasing money. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> chasing okay, money. The past two, you know, the past few years, how has it been for you? I know you had some ups and downs. It's been tough. I've had a lot of devastating losses. I've been so close so many times. I made the final on TV and got blown out by all those losses. It made me gain a lot of mental toughness, and that's how I got this belt. That's awesome. Very, that very mental so tough. Amazing. Yeah, uh, it's the power struggle. On that belt. <laughs> <laughs> well, today, EA Play, you know, first look at the Madden 19 trailer. Super excited. It's going to be so fun. It's lit. I honestly wish I could stay right here and talk to you guys forever, but I'm not going to board you guys. We're going to go out. I'm going to try to take this belt, you know, round two. So we're out. Have a good day. Bye. <laughs> Again, game engine footage. Not in game. Uh, You've worked your whole life gameplay. to get to moments like these. To the very top of the mountain. Uh, this is uh, what's his name? Ali. This is the continuation of the story mode. I personally do like the story mode in these sporting games. It's a little cliche, but it's fun. You fall, so you can rise. And you rise so that you can truly see. See that it was really never about reaching the end of the road at all. Oh, it's Ryan's team. But about all the moments that got you here. So, you're in their position. You let the moment define you, or will you define the moment? Now's the question. Uh oh. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Nathanius, professional shoutcaster, here alongside Redwood Studios general manager, Michael Martinez. How are you doing today? I'm super excited to be here. Yeah, we're gonna do this presentation a little bit differently and give you your first look 
at a brand new mobile game in a live... Oh, this is a command to conquer one. Holy shit. Also, just want to say, see how... So he's a shout, uh, shoutcaster. See how more naturally he talks and presents than 90% of the presenters we've had until now. It's great to have that, um, you know, uh, transparency where you have the developers take part or do the presentation, but they're not necessarily made for that job. You know, it will help to have something who's good at public speaking to have Michael, on the stage. The rules. Sure thing. The objective is straightforward. Destroy the opponent's base to win. Unit control, super simple. Just tap the, tap the destination, unit automatically moves there. The most efficient way to destroy the opponent's base is with this giant nuclear missile. They haven't even the of the map. told the name yet, the but okay. By standing on a majority of the control points. A bar fills up while the missile is possessed. Whoever controls the missile when the bar fills also, up. Also, I think Command and Conquer's uh, Command and Conquer game uh, lovers will hate this win. game. That's it. Sounds great, right, Michael. Well, enough talking about it. Let's let's get to this match. Absolutely. Right, we don't people don't even know what the game is. <laughs> lined up for you here today. Fighting for the blue side of the room. If you could please give a cheer for one of the most formidable RTS players there is. Make some noise for In Control. Did they? Did they? Did they yes. tell the name? Yeah. See, no one, no one, no one knows in chat. Opponent fighting for the red side of the room. A competitive mobile gaming phenomenon. Please join me in welcoming to the stage Nick at Night. Again, the leak of Command & Conquer Mobile was already said uh, earlier, but that was just on the pre-show, not by official. Yeah, these gaming styles yeah, and the competitive backgrounds that these players have, it should be a great totally. match. It really is. I can't wait. Right. Are the players ready? Let's uh, get this thing going. Ready to go. I'm ready to go. Let's do it. All right, let's kick this off. Uh, nice little strategy game. <laughs> this is... It's a good genre. Oh, dude, that's in control. In control has, of course, also been with um, the co-optional podcast. I'll tell you one thing: this show is rapidly heading to the worst EA press conference I've ever seen. Trying to take that position, Nick and Knight being able to reach it a little bit first in a strategy game. That flank position, that in control is going from the top side, also very important as Nick and Knight's forces have to circle around the center. Right. Let's see if he's able to create a two-on-one. Is he able to get there? Looks like he's getting there. Here comes GDI with uh, with uh, Rhino. It's going to rip up those infantry. Yeah, going for the anti-infantry, and like any strategy game, the units that you're going to use when you deploy them will have a huge impact. Your micromanagement of your forces and protecting that economy as well. Yep. Knight with some I think that Yon tells a lot how I feel about this game. Then again, of course, I'm not a mobile gamer. If this was a Star Wars mobile game, I would have the same reaction. I'm just not the market for this um, for these type of games. I guess there could be people who like this. He's done a great job of holding that down with the turret, and now he's redeploying his vehicles to the south side, bringing out more infantry to deal with the attack bikes. And as that economy ramps up, of course, we're seeing bigger and more powerful units come out. We have there the drill pod coming in the left side to help there it flank is. Putting those some flame flamethrowers. Right, absolutely. Again, those are going to tear through those infantry. Yeah, and in control brings out his first tank. That's going to be used to try and help push back these smaller forces as he makes his way to the south side. That missile passing halfway now. Oh, Both there it zone, is. Two okay. zones in control of Nick at night. He will have the missiles. We see it starts to point towards in control's base. Let's see if. In control, can get around to that top corner, able to halt that missile. He does contest the missile, putting it into the yellow position. Yeah, very important, of course, blocking the, the pathing of those units is another big factor for the strategy. Holding those locations is so crucial as in control begins to secure the northwest spot. Another tank's going to come out from Nick at night to take it out, but now he's bringing out the pit bull as well to help lock down that north position. This missile is very, very close to firing. Let's see what's going to happen. With another turret, in control flanks, he takes the top, that missile, and that fires, fires. Off. Wow. And Nick at night, one shot away from being knocked out here, as the next one will start to ready up in just a moment's time. In control's very heavy artillery force is doing a great job at right. taking control of the map. Yep. And we can see, as more of Nick and Knight's forces move up towards that north position, those harvesters, of course, very crucial, very important to protect those. As your economy allows you to get these big late game units, the units are going to come out a bit more slowly as you get more of them on the field. But in control, just spreading his forces out, trying to hold this advantage that he's had so yeah. far. Nick at night is trying to get in there, but there's a great turret placement from in control, blocking and just ripping through again those infantry. 
see Infantron now moving his tank towards this Another map. drill pod we're seeing with some flame tanks. Yeah, bring in the flank. Of course, those flame guys do amazing damage to the infantry, help to clean that out. Meanwhile, two more tanks coming out from Nick at Night to try and secure those positions. He brings up the laser infantry on the south side as well yeah. to deal with that tank. Going for counters, trying to scout out and see what your opponent is doing and make the proper response is so important in strategy. Absolutely. Nick at Night cruising around, thinking about harassing those harvesters, coming around the far side for those rhinos. Looks like he's really pressing it. And we see that missile is starting to get close to wow, firing with this. three zones in control for Nick and Knight. Looking to set things back the other way. In control, trying to rally his forces around. He doesn't want to engage with just one or two units. He wants to move all of them together, create a good flank position, and take over that side. And we're seeing the first mech units from In Control. This is the Wolverine. This is taking way too long. Jesus Christ. Fire that one off and settle all right. for next missile is going to end it. Next missile Quick wins. Clear. Let's see what happens. We'll have control. The Wolverines, as you pointed out, for In Control coming out to try and deal with these forces. But uh, Nick at Night's in a great job of getting mapped. Right, I'm going to read chat. The economy of there he is. Yep. Wow. Okay, we've got our first yeah, game. people also board. saying, why is this so long? It's Battlefield, why is so short? Everybody's like, why is this so long? It doesn't stop. He's also bringing out Back to Red Alert 1. Wow. A lot going on here. This missile is nearly... This is sad. It doesn't stop. Got it, man. Someone says how exciting, and then a yawning dog. That was epic. No, it was not. Amazing! What a match! Thank you so much. That was awesome. Any thoughts, guys? I just came to make mammoth tanks, so I, I've done my job. Yeah, absolutely. That was Thanks awesome. So we saw a little bit of everything right there. Perfect. Yeah. Let's hear it for Nathanius, Nick and Knight, and in control. Ladies and gentlemen, what you just saw was the worldwide reveal of Command & Conquer Rivals. Maybe. Rivals reimagines the real-time strategy experience for mobile. We're giving players complete, continuous control of their armies in quick, competitive, head-to-head -head matches that are fueled by skill and strategy. Now, Rivals will be coming to iOS and Android devices, but I'm excited to announce that Android players can play the pre-alpha today. So head to the Google Play Store, search Command & Conquer Rivals. The studio has been having an absolute blast playing this game, and we can't wait for you to play. Please let us know what you think. Thank you. Oh, are we going to get Anthem, or is this Mass Effect? What is this? <gasps> wait a minute. Wait, what the fuck is this? Is this Planet Side? Oh. This is a trailer, a CG trailer for Command & Conquer, isn't it? See, this is what I want to play! <laughs> this shit right here. <laughs> Not a mobile game. Look at this, look how cool this is. Oh my goodness. Exactly what I don't want to play. <coughs> God, this game is so bad it kills me. Mm. Oh my god. <coughs> Command and conquer for a new generation. Oh. Now, before we close the show with a spectacular epic anthem, I wanted to share a few final things. I am blessed to be able to work with some of the most creative people on the planet who come to work every day to create amazing entertainment. And what I can say about all of those teams and what I can say about us is that we are always trying to learn and listen and strive. No, you, you, you don't well, listen. You oh, my God. Experiences you're going to see today and as you play games this week, there's some things we hope come through. First, that at the very core is choice, <coughs> is that you as players get to choose how you play, what you play, when you play and what devices you play on. That in making those choices, you feel you are treated fairly. That no one is given an unfair advantage or disadvantage for how they choose to play. That for every moment that you invest, we know that you put so much of your life into the games we make. And that the All right, a little bathroom break. Let's, uh, let's finish this disaster. They, they need to break everything with Anthem to save this. 
and most importantly, that the games are fun, that we move past the grind, and that these are experiences that truly enhance your lives. And so, as we think through all the things that we're trying to do, know that we want to be better, and that we want to make great games. And that as much as we love making games, and as much as you love playing them, there's something that is even greater that we can do together. The power of this community when we come together to do amazing things is profound. Last weekend was the third year of our Play to Give program, where we show the world how the power of play can be a positive force for social impact. Millions of you out there participated in nine in-game challenges in our games, logging millions of hours in support of Play to Give. And to celebrate that, we contributed a total of $1 million to three charities that share our vision for a more inclusive world. A world where representation Again, that's good. That's a, not something we strive for. That's a good thing. They are the standards. And where bullying and exclusion are not an everyday threat. These three organizations, the United Nations, he for she, PACE's National Bullying Prevention Center, and Ditch the Label, an anti-bullying organization, all are doing great work, and we're proud to support them through Play to Give. That, and thank you for your- Oh, Jesus. First of all, nope. Support. Thousands of us at EA and millions of you together doing immeasurable good because we love games. Thanks for being with us and thanks for the incredible privilege of making games for all of you. Now, without further ado, let's take a look at Anthem. They're very confident about Anthem being like their big thing. Game engine footage, again, not in, in gameplay. Incredible. And left our world in Incredible. Chaos. Creating. Altering. Destroying. The anthem is all that remains. There's a storm coming. These walls can't protect us forever. <laughs> oh wow, nice color. Again, it was in-game engine, not... I mean, the style is very cool. It's a mixture of so much things. Destiny, um, Halo a bit, oh, cool. Mass Effect, uh, a little bit of Attack on Titan, so cool with the wall. I see it. So, I know all of you, like me, have had tons of questions about Anthem since last year. Yes, I did. We're all Bioware fans. So we're going to do something a little bit different for the rest of the show, and we're going to take a deep dive into Anthem. So I'm going to bring up some members of the BioWare team to chat with us. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Casey Hudson, Mark Dara, and Kathleen Rootsart. Oh. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming out today. It's yeah, got a little game to show, right? 
Yep. Let's it's going to be very exciting. So Casey, we're going to go ahead and just jump right in and get started with you. So now we know that you all started, or Casey, you started your career at BioWare way back in the day, but you yep. took a couple years off. But before you came back, you actually worked on Anthem before you left. Yeah, that's right. Um, so, you know, first of all, it's amazing to be back. It's awesome to be making games for Bioware fans. You know, we have the best fans. Uh, so it's been super satisfying to come back to it. And, you know, I just want to be able to continue the legacy of the studio. And that's kind of where it started with Anthem, is just thinking about, you know, what is the evolution of a Bioware game? And we wanted to create a brand new world for people to discover. They're doing the behind the scenes okay. shit that they did with Star Wars, but now with this. It's incredible. It was, you know, more of a dynamic and living world. A game that would change every time you came back and played it. We also wanted to do something where, you know, if you wanted to invite your friends into it, then you could do that as well. So that was really the initial vision of the game. Not an MMO, not a multiplayer game with stories sort of bolted on this side but something new and different, and I think the team has really captured that vision over the years. Your fans really love the stories from Bioware, but I think we're kind of curious how you're planning to make story work in this shared world. So a great story for Bioware is really about characters that you can have a connection with, um, choices you get to make, and feeling like the story is about you. In a lot of multiplayer games... This interview setup is terrible. It's not interesting to look at. It's long. Um, you can build a solution to that, but you have to really showing concept art does not work. This is like the reveal trailer for or the reveal event of Battlefield 5 all over again. So when you're out in the Except we already knew this was coming. The world is really dangerous and you're focused on your mission. And this is where other players get to play with you. The thing that's really interesting about this, it's unique for uh, for Anthem is that this is a living shared world. So whether there's weather or uh, it's nighttime. What we're experiencing, we're experiencing together. Everyone that's playing Anthem at a, at, a, at a moment is seeing the same thing. And this is what we mean when we talk about our world. It's a, <coughs> a shared world that we all experience together. But then when I finish my mission, I come back to a base like Fort Tarsus. And yeah, so it's literally the Destiny way. I turn in my, my uh, rewards, I talk to some characters, I experience the choices of my actions. And this is where your story really lives and breathes. And by doing it this way, we are, we're able to combine that impact and agency of a single player story with the fun of teaming up with your friends to play co-op in combat. And we're also designing it so that we can add story for years to come. So one of the first things that we hear when, um, from our community is they want to continue to play in our worlds when they've finished Mass Effect or Dragon Age. Players want more story. And so we've designed Anthem in a way that we can actually add more story for years to come. And it could be anything. A new moment with a character that you've grown to love, or uh, an event in the world that uh, deepens the lore, or uh, an entirely new storyline and plot. Well, I'm certainly not going to complain about more story. I don't think anybody out there is going to either. So Kathleen, I wanted to ask you, uh, from a writing perspective, since you are the lead writer, can you speak to what it's like to create a new world like Anthem from the beginning? Well, what's really exciting Why are us, they doing this? EA, um, what are you, what are, writers, you what are you doing? What are you doing? The devs, the designers, the artists, is that we're creating something new and mysterious for players to discover. So at the heart of the premise of Anthem is a world left unfinished by the gods. But the gods left behind their massive tools, and those tools are in constant conflict with this unknowable force called the Anthem of Creation. And the chaos of those things pushing against each other um, means that the world is constantly being reshaped in new and unpredictable ways. Yeah, violent storms, mutated creatures, gigantic monsters. It's a dangerous environment that you need to wear a suit of powered armor, a javelin, to, uh, to be safe in. Now, something I think a lot of players out there maybe don't stop to think about is just how much work goes into creating a new intellectual property or IP, as we've been saying. Now, you know, we've seen all these different creatures, and Mark, you mentioned the storms. What's the process of it creating a game like from scratch? Yeah, it's something we've done. Why, why would the people be interested in this? Uh, this is you know, really this is mind-boggling. Just kind of getting off the blank page. They need to fire so whoever whoever created this setup. 
So, like, what is the fantasy fulfillment? What are the new things you actually get to? Go I want to skip. I'm not going to skip because I know that if before. you know people so, watch this live, I was like, hold on, let me just what was chat. Things, um, you know, that's the power of creating new IP, especially for games, is that you actually get to build a whole. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it's also no gameplay, no gameplay. Switch to something else. Then we kind of. We still need to build all the rest of the stuff and what unlocks as creative. People say I was kind of excited for the game, but even the if even EA knows how to fuck up this. And then from there we can People are like, what is it exactly? Yeah, and one of the unique boring for Anthem is that there's no gameplay. I mean we're seeing the same like few seconds over and over again. So the world is always changing, um, whether the uh, storms, uh, seasons, and um, yeah, it's a really great concept. Everybody's like, it's already dead. It no gameplay, boring. Drop into the world. It's it's almost in real time, a dramatic event that changes the world for everyone. E EA is is is, is cutting its own wrist open. I mean, like it, it's incredible to see this. Sound really cool the way that they sound like they're gonna come together. But even though there's obviously a lot going on, it really also Look, this this same thing I've already seen three so times. This, it's incredible. Why we're as and why we're fighting these <laughs> pilot these exo jet these javelin exo suits. And uh, you need those suits to survive and fight in this world because the world will kill you. Um, but on top of that, uh, our ancient rivals The world will kill you. Uh-huh. They discovered a way they think to web. Oh, and then we get this shit again. Fucking commercials. Fuck off. <coughs> there we go. Weaponize the anthem of creation, and so um, we need to stop them and protect the free people of Tarsus. Now, I've heard you call this power armor a couple different things. Is it a, is it a suit? Is it a javelin? Like, what's the what's the canon term here? Oh, who cares? And there are four. And uh, they each have uh, unique abilities. There's the ranger. I guess it's the classes. And then there's the colossus, the interceptor, and finally the storm. It's literally yeah. um, so, uh, each gets the destiny classes with game. one sort of like extra uh, <coughs> more soldier for Ryan. Said, you're not your suit. You are a freelancer up or variant. Pilot, which means you can decide which mm. suit you want. To this one looks pretty cool. Food, based on the mission you want to engage with, or the or the javelin. I'm that speedy right. dude. Um, so, really what this allows us to do is, we built the suits to look like they're built from the materials of the world. Uh, so they each have their own unique abilities. So let's take a look at uh, the Ranger now. The Ranger is a more generalized suit, uh, able to, uh, to do a lot of different things. Uh, use, really designed for up close and personal combat, one-on-one uh, -on -one for the most part. The Colossus is heavier, more specialized but able to really pack in big weapons that let them devastate the battlefield. The destruction is pretty, pretty cool. I, I'm just gonna say the storm looks like it's gonna be my favorite. I'm sure you guys out there are picking your faves right now too. Um, so the javelins look awesome, but we're gonna take a couple questions right now. So Casey tweeted, some of you may have seen, asking for uh, people out there to send us your questions. <laughs> this one is gonna be from at it's sweet Nicole who asks, as a player who is all about making their character their own, what kind of customization options will be available in Anthem? Yeah, so we really want p players to express themselves, both through customizing the way their, their uh, javelin plays, through gear and uh, weapons, but also being able to personalize the way that it looks, uh, both through paint jobs as well as changing the actual... Oh, you can be like Mass Effect. Itself. We want teams to be able to do this as well. And because you're going to be using a javelin for a long period of time, we really want you to be able to make it your own. I'm glad you brought that up because actually, uh, Jay Legato has a question connected to customization. Monetization. How, when, loot box, cosmetics? Yeah, so we are going to have uh, some cosmetics and vanity items that you'll be able to purchase, but you're always going to know what you're going to buy before you uh, spend any money on it. So no loot boxes, no ability to pay for power. Yay. So that means no ability to spend money on gameplay advantage at all within Anthem. But Which, of course, they didn't want to do in the beginning. Anthem is an immersive experience that feels like it's complete from the get-go. So that means the main story, a big open world, and an ongoing service to provide new content for a long period of time. New story, new, new, uh, new experiences for everyone. Well, I'm glad to hear that I can make my javelin pink. That's really all I wanted to know, I'm going to be honest. All right, Casey. 
We talked earlier about this being a co-op experience. So can you tell me a little bit about how the team gameplay in Anthem is going to work? Yeah, it, it really is about you know the fun of teaming up as as a team of superheroes and working together. So um, you want to get a few people together of different classes. So you know I think here we're going to see the the Colossus, you know, just hammering people on the ground in gameplay. If we can have a look at that. So heavy artillery, being really strong, you know, in melee combat. And then here you've got the ranger shooting down from above. And then they're using com you know, combos and special abilities and stuff like that. But what I love is you don't just run around, you're swimming and flying as well. So it's interesting because at the Spike Tones wants to know, how will you <coughs> balance multiplayer with single player storytelling? So Anthem's really built around trying to combine the, uh, the impact of having your own personal story with the fun of playing with other players. But we really want to make sure that, uh, that playing with other people feels like a choice. So for Why can you not do this in a trailer story, format like they did in GTA V? It would, would, like would this, fit perfectly. Uh, going to be a little bit more challenging than, uh, than if the team of four people. And Again, really this, this looks cool, what I'm seeing here. Fun, even for people that don't normally and then it goes back to this stupid so really fucking poster thing. Everyone at least gives co-op a try. Okay, that's good to know. If you want to roll solo, you can, but it's just going to be a little bit more difficult. Um, well, I know you all are on the edges of your seats. No, How I'm not. About no. Show a little gameplay. Oh, no, I'm yeah. already I'm okay. already uh -huh. dead. <laughs> all right. So, um, Kathy, I think you're going to set this up for us. I will. So, um, the you you and your friends have decided to play a mission called Scars and Villainies. The Scars have put together an acid-based super weapon, so you got to take them out. <coughs> so Again, you start in the Strider, which is like a giant. The reason they did this was so that uh, have a conversation with your crew. to clear things up with the people who didn't and understand what Anthem was exactly. Could have been done much better, um, more fancy yeah, with the trailer, so voiceover, yeah, gameplay footage. Not this. Casey, Kathleen, for talking to me about Anthem today. Uh, we're going to go ahead and roll the gameplay now. Enjoy, everybody. This is the cow thing from the first trailer. Freelancer, time to get to work. They said these bastards made some kind of acid. We're using it as a weapon. So, find where they're making this garbage and shut it all down. Again, the world looks beautiful. It's like Jurassic Park meets Pandora. What's the plan here? Picking up loads of scars nearby. Take a look around the area, but uh, be careful. The, the again, the destruction right. is very impressive. Checking out the scar camp some more. Look at all the weapons! Oh, and the, and the turrets! Better move quickly. Like, that is what appeals me the most, is this world that you live in, like, that you get to explore. <coughs> That's really cool. Like, underwater as well, yeah. Including creatures. Look how beautiful this looks. Oh my god. There's a shaker relic. Wait, something's odd. Get a closer look, would you? See those radiant pieces of energy? They're echoes from the Anthem of Creation. Loads of scars nearby. Be careful. Ugh. 
Ooh, combo. Return them to the relic. You've got to silence it fast. It's got silent. Disaster averted. Do you think we get a bonus for... Wait, something's happening. What the hell was that? I think that was whatever laid all the eggs around here. The sound came from below your position. On the plus side, this definitely counts toward hazard pay. There's a train of this acid gunk leading down. Follow it. We should find the source. It looks pretty cool, but I don't know yet. Like again, the the, the reason why I would play this is just for uh, for world discovery. I'm so hyped, you guys! Yep, and that was uh, that was actually just a short version of the full demo that we brought here to LA. So if you want to come by the Anthem Theater here at uh, EA Play, you can check out the game live. So I think it will be fun if you play this uh, with a lot. Oh my God! Fuck off! Oh. Music and stuff and crap and okay. On everyone's minds, when do we get to play? So Anthem comes out February 22nd, 2019, on uh, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. So mark your calendars, everybody. Fire off your tweets. Thank you so much. Again. Fire off your Thank tweets. You the entire Bioware team. I know you guys have that awesome theater outside, so I will see you guys there. All right. Give it up there. for Casey Hudson, everybody. I also want to give a big thank you to all of the developers who showcased their games today and everybody working hard at their studios back home around the world. Let's give them all a round of applause. Now, some of what you saw today, you guys have to wait to play. But you guys, EA has so much available right now. Now, for those of you keeping score, you can get your free trial of FIFA 18's World Cup today. And Andrew told us about the free trial of Origin Access. Yarny is back with a buddy in Unravel 2, which is also available today. Plus, you can take on your friends in Command & Conquer Rivals starting today as well. Now, that's a lot of, a lot of available stuff that's out today. Is anybody ready to go home and download anything? No? You're like, I just want to go outside into the fan fest. I get it, I get it. So, uh, I want to let you guys know to keep your streams going because in just a few moments, the FIFA 18 World Cup Live Tournament is going to begin. I'm going to head outside and check out the games, but I want to thank everybody for coming down to EA Play today and watching the press conference, and have a great weekend! <laughs> okay, so that's, that's the end. Um, Jesus Christ. Okay, people. Love my, oh my god. So, listen up. EA. <clears throat> This might be the worst press conference, not only from you, which that is certainly, but it might also be the worst press conference I've ever seen on an E3, that's saying a lot. It was, first of all, the Battlefield 5, what they showcased was, the gameplay trailer was okay, but the fact that they had Battle Royale was awful. Uh, you know, where I punished Call of Duty for following a trend, EA or DICE is now doing the same thing. They had uh, FIFA, you know, FIFA, sure, that was fine. They do what they always did. Um, they have, uh, I'm not going to do it in the chronological order because I don't remember everything. The Yarny thing was, was, was okay. The Star Wars reveal, <coughs> first, underwhelming with only the title reveal. Um, but I guess they had to do something. And then, of course, the Battlefront 2. Uh, Clone Wars sort of like update that is coming in the f in the you know far future, also just showcasing the Han Solo trailer over and over and over again that we already got, you know nothing not showing us anything new anything relevant, 
uh, the command and conquer thing that took forever. Oh my goodness. Um, Madden, sure, that was fine, I guess. Um, I mean, they, they had the, the, the player and the, and, the, and, the, and the guy from the team. That was, that was fine. They do it every year. It's cringeworthy, but it's fine. It wasn't too long. Uh, what else? What, what, what else did they get? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting probably some games. but And then Anthem, where it's like, oh, that's the big thing. And then they do this terrible thing where they do this interview, and the interview lasts also forever. And it's just concept art and not gameplay. And then the gameplay that they did show was kind of cool. I gotta give it that, you know, it was kind of cool, but again, it didn't blow me away, uh, you know, I wasn't into Destiny or Destiny 2, so, I, you know, this is probably also not gonna be my, my thing, but it is, it is incredible how, how EA is, is, is doing this, and is, 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 like, failing expectations like this, it's, 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 it's insane, this is, uh, this is, uh, especially, too, where they have the advantage of, of being the first, uh, press conference, so, like, spirits are high, you know, we are, like, we're, like, you know, we're a little bit more forgiving on things, because, you know, we just started, we're fresh, we, we feel, uh, you know, spirits are high, but it's, uh, it's, it's incredible, like, last year, last year, there were cringe-worthy moments, like the YouTubers and that sort of thing, but at least they had cool things, they had a way out that they showed, uh, they had a variety with also, for example, the race game, I remember Need for Speed, I think it most, one, well, actually, I don't remember the name of the Need for Speed game, but, it looked at least spectacular. Um, they had, of course, Battlefront 2, which back then we all were very excited about how that looked. We didn't, of course, know what it would turn into, but at least, uh, you know, also had Anthem, which was a surprise title. So last year was was a lot better, even though it was still cringeworthy. Um, but this year, they they, they, they dropped the bomb. They, uh, they need to go back to the drawing board for next year and need to be far more streamlined, more effective, more efficient, because this was just, uh, in, in certain segments, super boring to watch. Um, oh, yeah, that, that something SOS, which looked cool, but also took too long with the, the developer talking. It was just, it was, it was, it was incredible. Um, yeah, no, it, it lacked, it lacked a certain streamline or, 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 or vision there, so, yeah. This is a this is a big F uh, EA. You uh, you have disappointed me. Um, it's going to be very easy for things like Bethesda and Ubisoft to overthrow you. Of course, last year it was the Bethesda presentation that was the, the least impressive because they didn't really show too many new games rehashed a lot of games that they already had in trailers um and of course this year at least they're going to show a few new things with Rage 2 um what's the other one uh Fallout uh, 76 so you know those things are already probably enough to already go over this. Anyway, guys, uh, let me know your thoughts on the EA press conference. I'm very, very curious. Also, mostly like the Battlefield 5, what do you guys think? I know that there's not a lot of love for the reveal trailer there on my channel as well, but I'm very curious what you thought now that you've seen this. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. I will be back with uh, the uh, upcoming press conference of, I'm not entirely sure which one is next, if it's Bethesda or Ubisoft, but you'll see me on the screen again. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.